I don't know. Fortunately or unfortunately, we have one lecture. At least for me, it's fortunately. But for you, I think it's unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we have one more topic that uh, from school, they uh, tell me to conduct this course also for you. Uh, and uh, the main reason that I accept this course is there is the relation between this course and one more which we have later in next year, which we call it single chip computer. Uh, you know that in the world of embedded system, now we need some um, tools to combine them together. One of that tools is this part of lecture that I uh, accept to teaching uh, for this semester. And one difference between this and our DIP course is that this course is fully based on your uh, assignment and your working, which that DIP course is off and off. What I mean that in this course, because it's very simple and it's very even amazing part. I can tell you one of the nice topic that any teacher can teach is this uh, mobile application because it's something like the new technology, something like uh, the new trend of the knowledge that most of the people wants to have it. And, Another thing, a nice thing in this topic, a specific topic, is that after development, you can see it on your mobile phone. Then no need for any other uh, tools uh, and any other thing. Just you need one USB wire and one internet connection that it can be provided whenever you are. And then check and do the programming. Uh, Then I, uh, when school offered me this, I accepted. And because I want uh, you to course later, and I'm sure you can be more successful in that uh, course also. Then uh, today, just I split for first is about introduction about the course that we have in the first lecture. And second one, it's about uh, the ID that I select for you and why I select this, okay? Then for the third day lecture, um, we will go deeply inside of that. Um, just uh, today we made the mock system. In the mock, there is the syllabus that I load there. You can see it. even today, I will describe it during this first lecture which part we should know, which part we can apply to learn. And then, uh, um, like DIP or any other course, we have task assignment and then let us start and see. Okay, as usual, this is my first uh, picture of my PowerPoint, that you should fasten your seat and, and then concentrate on your study. Um, and I will try, as usual, give you more than the book and reference that you expected to have. Mainly, I'm interested to have some much more practical part. No need to introduce myself for you because now we know each other from a long time and you know my special stream and major that I work in the robotic and automation part. And this course also is one of the course which is exactly related to my work. Um, then uh, for the timing, uh, we have the Monday lecture like today uh, around 8 p.m. on Beijing time. And uh, then we change to the Thursday uh, around 12 on Beijing time that I will uh, put the notice. For the Dean talk, we have this uh, class management system that already you are here, no need to add much more. I think instead of having the two different class for the DIP and Dink, I'll put them together. And for the WeChat, same as the AJM lectures, any notice, anything will come there and you can follow that. Okay, 
Let us start from this point. Uh, first, um, I want to give you some highlighted point that even sometimes I thought with myself. Um, in the mobile application development, what should be the advanced feature list? Okay. What I mean that, my friend, you know, this mobile application or even the concept of mobile is uh, something we can say uh, not much more old, but it's not much more new, but not much more old. At least these 10 years, uh, there is the history we have about mobile application development. But what we are searching for the advanced feature list. I searched last night and found some critical point that we'll describe and discuss with you, the first lecture. Without that voice search, location, face detection, in incorporate alertnesses, social integration, uh, arguments reliability, uh, reliability, AI integration, personalization option, working offline, more touch and easy payments are the advanced feature list that I found that most of the people are believed that. Now, I found this part from the white paper, okay? Some part is nice and some parts maybe uh, we should think over it. But anyway, overall this article was nice that I share with you. For the voice search, you know, uh, in the mobile application, we are searching for some possibility which consider as the best feature, and this is the revolutionary option that is transforming user experience. A scenario of searching for information, suppose your friend telephone number or your friend mobile or uh, mobile or your friend email or any detail address can be searched by the voice search. And within user virtually command the app to search for the new product series and or anything that uh, would have otherwise done by typing the keyword. Even maybe you saw this in the Windows 10 version that they start to work with the voice. Yeah. I don't know how much you use, but personally I will not use much more on Windows 10, but Against these windows on my mobile, so many times I use this voice search because suppose when I'm driving, I know that I should not use my mobile, but if I want to search, I will use that. And then we can um, communicate with the other persons through this voice searching, finding their number and their community. This is one uh, application development or Location tracking, which is much more even all of us have the good experience with that in China because we don't know the place. And then with the help of this app, we can find the place that we want. We can have the route to come back and go there. So many times I lost in Ganjo and this A map saved me really no top that the problem, some problem regarding the reading of the street's name we have or exactly the location that we don't have. This location uh, tracking can save people. And now even you can think for the old person and some um, person who have the limitation, any type of the limitation, this location tracking can help them. Suppose Alzheimer's people, people who have uh, some specific problem, suppose um, some disease that suddenly they need the help, then with that they can help them. So many nice projects, so many nice applications just for the location tracking can come to the picture. Suppose you want to track your uh, brother, sisters, your son, your daughter, easily you can do it with the uh, location tracking. What about any other option? Suppose face detection is also one of the nice things that nowadays most of us use for our mobile phone when it's locked. Suppose when we want to enter our email address, instead of doing the password job, we can do with the uh, face detection. Even 
There are still some limitation to use this face detection, but it's very useful. And somehow the percentage of um, success for this face detection are more. Uh, the next point can be the incorporate analysis, which is adding the feature to track and identify the action of using is another way to be had. Uh, this is helpful to understand the user's uh, activities, to know their interests, and to help them. Maybe some of you use the Huawei Health. Uh, I personally use that to counting my working time, what was my exercise per day. Then we can, I can analyze how much steps I have. Okay. And sometimes it, I will use it as fun. But real thing is that uh, even nowadays, they add something like that, that uh, some feature like that, that they can measure the, uh, the BP of uh, your body, the blood pressure of your body. They can record it. They, they can uh, submit the sugar test that you have for your body or any health uh, situation. Then think that like this, they can analyze you and see that which uh, about disease you have or um, what you need like that, they can assist you. Some social integration is another way. Suppose uh, the concept of that, uh, which user have, uh, have the sharing some social transfer uh, platform and has become an uh, unavoidable feature for almost all type of the mobile application. Uh, something like WeChat, I think, is the social integration for the mobile uh, application, which by that, people can share the data, people can share some story. They can share uh, some experience or something like that, you know, uh, inside of this um, app, and then others can use it. If I want to tell you uh, more regarding this mobile development, suppose argument reality, which is the technology to enhance the user experience, but offering them three-dimensional digital content or object of real world perception for on mobile platform, which um, something like VR, uh, which uh, give the real time environment information for them. And artificial int intelligent integration is one of the top technologies that have revolution almost every industry. And by adding this AI touch in app or any app, you can serve your customer better by suggesting them to product similar to one they have added to the cart. You can also know them recommendation and do lots more enhance their experience. Uh, what about more than this um, development type? Live on a stream, which uh, has become one of the essential parts of mobile app, and users are free to share their experience while using the app. This feature has become one of the main parts of the mobile application and app industry uh, opting um, the idea to broadcast the brand in the real platform. Uh, another option should, can be personalization option, which is the least mobile application are uh, redefining the way mobile apps used to be in the and personalization features allows the users to work on an app the way they want. Uh, it is all about how much an app understands the users who are looking out for different product or service. This feature uh, empowers uh, the users with flexible settings, something like font, color, size, and many more options. Working offline is another feature, which in that it's an advanced feature in the app and uh, can work without internet uh, connection. 
And this feature allows the app to balance the data and functionality in that condition. The app is integrating uh, with uh, these features, allows users to access the information and deal with the situation when the internet is not available. Um, even more touch is one of the another demand uh, part of the, these recent app, which in that less typing, the more hazardous, less working, and the user looks for app with a few touch and more accessibility. Uh, they can simply tap uh, to choose from different options rather than typing them manually. Apart from this, you can add various filters and sorting option to narrow down the search criteria of the user searching for product and service on your mobile. Maybe this last one all of us will use in China, and this is Easy Payment Gateway by the Alipay, or uh, in Chinese they say Zifuba, or uh, WeChat Pay, which in that, a secure payment gateway is available. And this feature allows paying easily, instantly, and uh, securely, especially from the e-commerce app. The payment gateway features provide an advantage to the app users to make payment through their credit, debit card, net banking, online uh, wallets, and more. This uh, builds trust and loyalty among the brand and the user. Then, why I tell you this feature? Uh, okay, one, one more is main that we can call it bottom line, which these days companies put their best effort into developing customer-oriented mobile applications that represent business globally. Their focus is to make every mobile app uh, in signing and advanced features, improve user experience, and bring more customer satisfaction. So consider the feature mentioned in this article while developing the mobile app to make it represent your brand effectively and deliver outstanding experience to the user. As the last sentence that just already I tell you, my main aim was mobile application development. What should be the feature? What should be the key point that we should have inside our, uh, our app? And till which stage or which step is acceptable now. Suppose, think, if you had the application 10 years back, we just um, have simple game. I don't know how, how many of you use uh, the game of a snake. There was one snake which is going and then uh, following holes. All of us play with that, and that time we were, happy. we were happy. But now, if that game we have on our mobile, we don't like it, because through the quality of the graphics, through the um, working condition, size of the LCD, so many things, color of, and all these things, now it changed. That program is not much more amazing for us. Okay. This uh, means that if now you do the job at the level of a snake, uh, this development for the mobile is not much more accepted. Nowadays, industries, nowadays, projects need some uh, work which focus for having much more part of these uh, recent topics that I already gave you. Think and have it in your mind, then why, what we mean by mobile application development. Okay, then what we need for doing this mobile application, we need one IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Okay, which we have in our course, we have App Inverter. 
I will tell you why I select this specific ID for you. But if that, please remember that I will share this book with you, App Inventor, and you can have it with the PDF or very simple and perfect, I think, because I personally also read and learn so many things from that. But once again, come back and see that in mobile application development, what we are searching for, you know that programmers are need to create code and large application for everything from business to communication to education and game. This is the work of program. Um, in the course that we have, we will help you to expand upon the pro own application from start to finish. And through accelerated and immersive programs, students focus on demand of industry while utilizing today's development tools and technology. Mobile application development and app, um, if you want to talk and from uh, page regarding that, we can say that in this course, uh, we have some hands-on experiments, which developing a, a interesting the Android application. For this, no previous experience in programming is needed. And suitable for a student with any level of computing experience. And for this target, because when I want to select the ID for you, you didn't already finish the uh, Java course uh, fully, means some part of Java is remained. And a skill of your Java coding that was not clear for me. Then I try to select one ID which should be simple, and all of you can work with that and see the result on, inside your mobile. This software, we call it MIT App Inverter, which will be used in this course, and it is block-based program, which allows anyone, even uh, novices, to start programming and build fully functional apps for Android device. Students are encouraged to use their own Android device for hands-on testing and exploration that you will do during our uh, course. What we want you to learn is that learn to use the open development tools and app inventor to program an Android device. You will learn how to design and build the mobile apps, their location, send and receive the text message and give advice and direction. The only limits on type of apps you will learn to build is your own imagination. We don't have any um, link when we go for developing the app. And however, computer science is not just about coding and building the app. We will also learn some fundamental principle of computer science. We will learn about potential and the limitation of computing and coding. And we will learn how the internet work and about the positive and negative aspect of computing in today's society and much more. For these words, uh, broader computer concepts, we will work within an emerging uh, curricular uh, framework, which uh, the computer science principle or CSP. This CSP framework is being a science educator from around the country under the uh, uh, some college and support fund uh, regarding the national foundation. An addition for programming and CSP course is project-based and emphasizing writing, communication, and creativity. 
then we have some um, exam regarding this course, which uh, we will conduct and speak uh, uh, in later about how we can uh, have the question and how we pass for the exam. But again, I want to come back and tell you regarding the ID, which we call it MIT App Inventor, uh, which is uh, very nice because in this, maybe some people who didn't still use much more programming can use this part. Because the whole concept of this ID is based on block. I don't know how much you work with a logo or uh, some puzzle blocks which uh, it has some specific names, they call it coding without. And in them, uh, what they will do then, instead of writing any part for the code, you can select the block and just put it inside your environment. And then with the help of that, you can simply uh, upload on your mobile and then see your result. Um, there are uh, some histories, history regarding this MIT, which I will tell you later for the second lecture. But if we want to review, these are the parts that I will try to cook for you for this course regarding the introduction to the app inventor, to the blocks, to the math part, to the sound, to the timekeeper to the variables, introduction to variables, rules. Spinners means that some components of drawing app uh, intro to components and notebook app intro to making an interactive games and then location components and web uh, viewer. Uh, part for this syllabus, maybe add some parts will be, it is become small. Still, I don't, but I will try to cover all and also add much more about this software. As usual, if you want to be successful, you should attend all the lecture, send the homeworks and learn, study PPT and video, ask your question, and then read my lecture note. Then obviously you can be successful about this course. Exam, final exam and midterm exam will be declared soon. Means that how should be the percentage, how should be the midterm and all. Don't worry, purposefully I didn't put it here. And another thing is that you should send your assignment because I will count it as the exam. But maybe you ask me, what is the assignment? For assignment, we have a booklet I will share, and then you can do one by one and finish it. Okay, this is for our first lecture time. If you have any question, we can have the friendly talk now, uh, and then um, we can continue for the second one. Please, any question if you have, or any things that you want to know, Please ask me now. For today, I just want to give you some hints regarding the various IDE that we have in mobile development. In the first uh, talk, what I described was which point we should have in our mobile application. Now, in the second one, maybe I'm going to talk regarding uh, the Okay, uh, regarding the ID and Android uh, ID. Um, you know, a software application or Android ID, ID, you know, it's the um, abbreviation from, or from the full form of integrated development environment. Uh, 
uh, it's using for the creation and development of the software. It's single framework that units multiple tools required for developing the software. Nowadays, majority of the mobile application development are using IDE for developing apps for Android device. With the rise in the popularity of the Android apps over the last few years has contributed to high usage of IDE for uh, apps uh, creation. Here we have um, eight most IDE as the first part I will uh, describe for you, which are uh, uh, declared in year 2019, means last year, and uh, all of them stated IDE supported uh, and array of uh, programming, sorry, array of uh, uh, programming language like uh, Java, C++, and enable pro mobile developer and even beginner to build a native or hybrid uh, apps. These app uh, development tools are among the most used IDEs by programmers and developers all over the world as it helps to maximize productivity by creating the stable application integrated with best features. Everything from easy code navigation to error checking feature of these IDs make them the best Android developer in uh, These are the least uh, of the Android IDE. First one is Android Studio, which is generated by Google, official ID for Android based. And uh, another one is Eclipse, which is the Open source ID is the second most popular in the world, and it's more than just an ID for Java desktop apps. Visual Studio with uh, Shamiran, uh, which is the Microsoft uh, flagship ID, comes in multiple versions, but when integrated with uh, Shamiran, which Microsoft purchased last year, it's enabled plus platform native development. Uh, in IntelliJ, uh, IDA, IDEA is the described the capable and economic IDE for JVM. NetBeans, which is known as primary as a Java IDE, but it also supports many other IDE for Java X and boosts uh, a large community of users and work well for Android development. Komodo is active state. Uh, uh, ID, which is best for web and mobile app uh, development. Cordova is the first development by company Nitobuy and was originally known as PhoneGap. PhoneGap also is the other implementation of Apache uh, Cordova open source mobile development framework. This is one list which is come out in 2019. And in these eight months, you will not see App Inventor at all. Then maybe some of you ask me why we are not a start from Eclipse or Android Studio. Just hold on. I will tell you why I select App Inventor for you. Even in the first lecture, I give some hint. But uh, for total concept that I want you know, just you should be much more patient to uh, have that uh, knowledge. Number nine is the uh, Tintanium, which is the X-Way uh, platform for power mobility for the 70% of the um, Fortune 100. App Inverter is the 10th one, which is aimed on helping students and other new developer create the first Android app and AIDE allows you to develop the Android app or website from your Android device. Now maybe you get one point which it say between the 11 number of famous ID in the world, App Inverter ranked 
is 10, which is not really 10. Um, this is your task. I even put it in the task that you find. What is the rank of app inventor? And you should give the reference even for that. And why we select app inventor, it's something that I will tell you later. This I bring from this website uh, as a day declarate about it. But among of uh, this IDE, this should be some standard and there should be some criteria when you want to select any IDE for your mobile application development. What I mean that, suppose Eclipse or suppose Android Studio. Why we should Eclipse and why we should not select the Android Studio? Okay, which point is uh, some critical rule to selecting the IDE uh, and how we should select the proper IDE, especially Android IDE for the jobs that we uh, I can go ahead with this type of ID and why I should not select another one. Let us review the point and criteria which uh, we should keep in our mind when selecting any Android ID. Then to determine which IDs include in the list, we review some several uh, core areas, including the following developer and owner of Android ID, who, who develop it. Key feature, programming language that we can support in ID that we want to select. Uh, target operating system, okay, in addition to Android. What should be my OS that it can run on that? Operating system on which the, my ID will run. System requires uh, requirements for running the ID target audience for the Android ID, first production release of Android ID, most recent update, a stable release for that, and license. Is it open source? Is it uh, freeware or so uh, for, uh, I don't know, what is that? And maybe the most important part, what is the price that we should pay for that Android ID? These are the criteria which you select any ID. Let us review some previous uh, um, famous Android ID in one glance, and then we will know that why we select and why I select App Inventor for you. As I said, the most powerful one in the world till today is Android Studio. It's uh, rated the best ID uh, for the Android development. This built by Google and uh, received uh, rev uh, reviewers by mobile apps development all over the world. There are plenty of advantage of using these as an uh, IDE and um, allows mobile app to test application on various platforms. This ID is perfect for beginner as its future uh, app building lessons that help developer get an understanding of entire process. Some of the top feature of Android Studio make it best. Androids are code completion and real time error check uh, post of uh, mobile apps. Second one was uh, IntelliJ idea, which is popular for providing the excellent coding assistant to the Android apps developer. This ID is also considered to be among the best Android development tool by various professionals, and it's a Java programming apps for Android that many developer use to build top quality application that are responsive, fast, and most importantly, stable. When compared to a standard mobile app uh, tools, development tools, these IDE are multiplayer frameworks and it's undentifiably 
a better choice as it significantly improves the productivity of the developer. Draw the script is another IDE by a developer and it's designed to maximize the productivity. This Android developer boasts a wide array of feature powerful coding, the easy process of mobile, uh, facilitated by this, make it one of the best one, and it's available on web store. Draw the script is the Java IDE for the Android that can be easily downloaded on your computer. Uh, you can build the future rich native Android app with the help of Droid Script, and it's easy to navigate through the platform, make it one of the best Android developer tools. Uh, the next IDE that we will talk is Visual Studio, which is, it's also among the best uh, Android app development software, and it's used to build the native as well as hybrid apps. This one equips with powerful coding, and this incredible integrated development environment lets developers not just build attractive and responsive with mobile apps, but also test its various functionalities. It provides developers with the analytics this data that helps them improve the speed uh, of the apps and provide quick fixer to bugs. By using the feature of Visual Studio, developer can create efficient applications of bugs and offer enhanced apps experience to its user. Another idea that we can see is Chrono. <laughs> this is not the Chrono that <laughs> now we have. The name is Chrono. It's highly preferred portable coding tools, which serve as the best ID for the Android. And everything from downloading, installing, writing, programming, to deploying the mobile apps, Chrono ensures that developers have the free experience while building the mobile application. Once done, with the development process, developer can test the apps and make the required change to deliver top performing apps. Beginner as well as experienced developer use this ID as it's known as build adaptive and responsive apps. Aside from that, the reason why Corona is hailed as the best Android as development software is that it allowed, uh, allows developers to test the final version, resolve problems, and repair bugs in the smooth and trouble-free way. AID or Android ID is use uh, your Android device to create top quality mobile app with uh, AID. This incredibly powerful ID helps developers design the best Android apps that are rich with features and look visuality applying. Mobile app developer can utilize this and use an top rated and, uh, Android developer ID. This platform also makes coding seem like a rather easy task and professional developer as well as developer use this for Android app uh, development. CPP draw uh, is equipped with the numerous code example and is the IDE which received uh, lots of positive reviewers from experts in last few years. This IDE comes with the uh, offline features and helps the developer uh, with code completion and also configuration. Moreover, its powerful real-time diagnostics property allows app developer to fix the security threats and bugs that cause the apps uh, to function in efficiency and slowly. CP Droids offer plenty of tutorials, sample, example, and it's come with Google Drive support uh, as well.
Basic for Android or B4A is also another IDE, which is a mobile app development platform and let per creates app for Android device. This IDE can help the developer build any type of Android apps, boosting functional features like code completion, and B4A makes the mobile app development process a less challenging task for developer and just install decides on the interface layout and features. Write the codes to create an application and B4A lets you customize the app so that you can use the unique theme and decide on the location. The these are was the eight uh, ID. The rest of the things on that I put in this table. Now you can compare. See, Android Studio, the language that it can uh, support. Java, C, C++, Kotlin. Target is just Android. Something may come in your mind. What about iOS? No. Which operation system it can have? It can have Linux, it can have Mac OS, and it can have Windows. Okay, good. Uh, audience or experience? Okay, license, it's freeware. Price is free. Good. For Android developer, good. Eclipse, Java, C, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, more. Good. Number of languages is more. Target OS, Android, Linux, okay, Mac OS, Windows, good, it can support all. Any OS supporting Java can run this. Professional developer will use it, and Eclipse basic license we need, but price is free, very good, Eclipse is good. Visual Studio, C++, C, C Sharp, Visual Basic, PHP, Okay, something new. JavaScript, more, good. OS, cross platform, Windows, Android, iOS, more. And runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, good. Uh, what about audience? Experience and license is Visual Studio Code is open source MIT and free to $2,999. Okay, little bit uh, we should think for that, even we use the crack one, but uh, maybe we should pay. Intelling idea is Java, Scala, Ruby, Kotlin, JavaScript, TypeScript, SQL, okay, some new language. Any OS can support, runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, okay. Professional Java developer will use it. Apache, two license use and uh, proportionality edition use and price is 499 per year. It's free up to this much. Little bit we should pay. Net means which language it can have? Java, C, C++, HTML, PHP, JavaScript, others. Cross platform, it can run on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, okay. Professional developer use, and license is CDL1 and GPL2, but price is free. Komodo, you will see Java, JavaScript, Python, target is cross platform. Runs on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and audience is professional when on mobile and developer. And license is probably uh, pro functionality uh, Komoto edit in Mozilla and public licenses that it's free up to $394. Little bit we should think. Cordova will use the HTML. CSS, JavaScript, okay, we have lots of uh, things, as you will see. It can run on Windows and Mac, experienced web developer will use it, licenses Apache 2, like PhoneGap, 
you will see, but most of them price up to some extent, it's free for the ID because they want to encourage user to use. Okay, now come here. We have the app inventor. Language is Kawa. Target OS is Android, which is not really Android. iOS is also there. Windows, Mac OS, Linux is there. Audience are students and uh, some students, some person who want to learn. License is from MIT license and it's totally free. Maybe some points come here that why I use uh, App Inventor. This table should updated because in 2019 iOS is added to that and as I test Java code is also working with app inventor then um, somehow we can know why I select this app inventor for you what is app inventor now is an online app development software which is maintained by MIT and this developer tool is the great way to showing beginning programmers how to use the block style programming to make simple apps and game. There is one little bit new concept for programming, which people will call it block style programming. This method of programming mainly used for children, but as people estimate it will come into the professional and fast developer persons soon and people will going to shift from this type of the coding that we have into that this block style programming it's something like general language something like english language that all of us can use it to communicate with each other and it can translate to Python, can translate to Java or any other language. The feature is like that. The main reason that I select App Inventor for you is this block style programming, which is new and you can enjoy programming without any problem. Beside of enjoying, you can have the fast development uh, programming with this. My friend, nowadays is the day of fast developing anything. Microcontrollers, fast developing. Programming, fast developing. And any other of uh, product that we need in uh, around us need the fast development. Then learning this ID will help you to have the I think better future. I don't want to tell you that Android Studio is not good. Never. I don't want to tell you that Eclipse is not good. Never. Or any other 10 IDE that I tell you. All of them are perfect. All of them are good. But the target that we select, App Inverter for you, is that we wanted to teach you some block style programming and fast development concept which is the need of two-day industry, two-day uh, science work and research, okay? But after this course, if we meet each other, uh, if you had problem for the Android Studio, I can give you some task and you will learn Android Studio very fast. I'm sure that you can learn it very fast. Uh, maybe I will talk with uh, a school after the semester, give some uh, lecture for us when we come back to school, all of us. And then we will review the Android Studio critical points for two, three lectures, and you will see that how much it's also simple. Then our target is App Inventor and why I select install programming. Another thing is that compared with the others, it also has the rank and main thing is that it's new you should learn new things. App Inverter is the web application integrated development environment originally provided by Google and now maintained by MIT. It allows uh, newcomers to computer programmers to create the application software, APPs, for two operating systems, OS, Android, and iOS, 
which 8th of July 2019 is the final beta testing on iOS, is free and open source, released under a dual license, Creative Commons uh, attribution share alike, and on portal license and an Apache license to uh, for the source code. It's used some graphical user interface as um, form of GUI and very similar to programming language Scratch, programming language, which is used to a star logo and allows users to drag, draw visual objects to create an application that can run on Android device. While App Inventor uh, Convention, the program that allows the app to run and debug on, that works on iOS running device are still under development, but after July 8th in 2019, it's also come out and I feel they are working. They uh, estimate that this year, it will be finalized. In creating App Inverter, Google draw up significant research in educational com uh, computing and worked on within Google on online development environment. You know that in any process of design, we have some discover, some design, and after that we have some develop, after that we have some launch and envision we have. Again, we can have discover. This is the cycle of design process. It's same we have in App Inventor. App Inventor and other projects are based on uh, and informed by constructed learning theories, which emphasize that programming can be the vehicle for engaging the powerful idea through the active learning, the fast development idea that I tell you. As such, it's part of an ongoing movement in computers and education that began with the work of uh, Simfor papers and the MIT logo groups in 1916 as has also uh, manifested itself with the uh, mission uh, and Lego and a star logo uh, like that. Let us see more about this app inventor. You can build your project on computer, connect to the device, at the MIT AI2 convention. We'll talk next lecture on these and leave preview and then test it in real time on your mobile. This much simple. Everyone should be able to tinker with the smartphone and use uh, excitement around for to attract the people to see us. This is the aim that these two people, Hal and Mark, start to make the M2 app inventor. And this application was become available on July 2010, December of 2010. And it's become a publicity silly. An app inventor team was lead by Hal and Mark uh, Friedman. Then in 2011, Google released the source code for them. And then the MIT Center for Mobile Learning, lead by App Inventor Creator. Um, and this MIT was launched them on 2012. Means that still it's young. We can work uh, with some new ID like that. Okay. Then total concept regarding app inverter is like that. You have some GUI that you can perform by the blocking two, two phase you have app inverter designer and app inverter block editor. Designer is the GUI that you can see and inverter is the hidden part that you do the block coding with that. Then you can develop your Android uh, emulator or you can run it on your mobile phone and then use the Google app inverter service to develop everything on your mobile phone. This is the whole cycle of working with this IDE. As an example, you will see 
I didn't do any coding here, but it can return the hello world on my mobile. We will test this on next letter. And easily you can just select the blocks, combine them together, and then uh, see the result of hello world on your mobile phone. Um, these app inventor are event-based. And there is no syntax error for that. You just drag and drop only some blocks, plug in, and high-level Android uh, library uh, built by Googlers. No need to do much more things, okay? It's something like puzzle and game. You should just fix the blocks and do the coding. How we can use them? We can use them in prototyping, build the complete app, Suited apps and personal apps means that it don't have a um, restriction. Why we should learn it? Because its uh, software is in every walk of the life and programming is become part of many jobs. We can explore the mobile computing. We can have some practical skill like web, math, media, and prepare for learning Java, Python, JavaScript, creativity and idea, and problem solving skill. You can change your work with learning any language, and this app inventor also can help you to become more skillful. Don't forget this sentence. Okay, that was the story that why I select app inventor for you, but for the first task, I want these three points from you that you search also. And till the next lecture, you can send it on my email. Please don't forget to say that uh, your um, here you should tell me uh, in for the subject of your task. Please put app inventor and then put the task number, a student name, and a student ID uh, PPT. Then uh, please answer these three tasks for me and send it. Uh, then for the next uh, lecture, we can do I'll use this reference for you. All of them I read and then combine this. Uh, for the next lectures, I will give you my personal working with uh, this app inventor. What uh, I get through two years working with this nice IV. Maybe some part you will not find any place because this is my personal experience. And some parts is common as usual, okay? And uh, by this course, you will make lots of application for your mobile phone. I'm sure that you will enjoy it if you follow the lectures. And even it's more interesting that DIP, but DIP is more also valuable. Don't miss that. Um, this was the reference that I used for you. I think it's okay for today. I will load it on the MOOC. You can use it and read it once more as you want. And task number one also I will share on AJM uh, group. And uh, anyway, uh, we can do the attendance for now. Uh, if uh, after that you don't have any question, we can stop.